Let's climb. The Belfry of Bruges. On its first floor, a medieval chest with a hidden treasure is hidden, and the second houses a musical secret that is unique in the world. A bit higher you can find an invention that would change humanity forever. And the top of the tower may well have been copied from a famous Dutch church. Follow us and learn all about this special building that slowly grew over the centuries. Welcome to the main square of Bruges. Since the Middle Ages, this square has been the economic heart of the city, in which the Belfry and its city halls played a central role. The city halls are first mentioned in a source in the year 1211 and were still made of wood at that time. In the halls were markets and storage spaces for mainly wool and cloth traders. But why did these halls get a tower in front? The history of the iconic tower begins with a surprising origin. Would you have guessed that Belfry actually means siege tower? To understand why, we have to look at the word belfry. The word belfry comes from the French berfroi, which means movable wooden siege tower, although these towers were never used in sieges. Belfries can be found in many northern French and Belgian towns, and probably the first ones were indeed fixed wooden siege towers. The height of the first floor in this type of tower provided good protection for valuables and archives. But there was one thing the tower was less resistant to. City fires. It is quite certain that Bruges also had a wooden belfry because we do know that the linen trade flourished in Bruges in the 13th century and we are sure that the wealthy merchants had a stone belfry built in the second quarter of the 13th century, around 1240. This belfry had only one floor, and the construction of this tower symbolised the rise of a new power, the wealthy bourgeoisie. Until then, building buildings like this was reserved only for the church and nobility. On the first floor of the belfry were two, treasure chests that you can still find today, and they were stored behind the lock of no fewer than eight wrought iron gates. Behind these gates, the city of Bruges treasury was kept, and in one chest, which was locked with no fewer than ten keys with which the city's laws were sealed, each kept by a different person, the city seal was stored. Despite the fact that the base of the belfry was made of stone, all archives were lost in a fire in 1280. After the fire, it was immediately decided to move a new city archive to a new town hall that was to be built with much greater fire safety. The halls and base of the belfry were restored between 1285 and 1296 and received a wooden spire with a bell tower inside on top. Around the market halls, which grew into a central trading place in the region, the city of Bruges itself also grew into perhaps the heart of international money trade in northwest Europe. We now also return to the military function of the tower because it was of course important for the citizens to be warned for enemy troops from outside and rest in the city, and most importantly, the greatest enemy of a city with wooden houses, fire. From 1288 onwards, city guards in the Belfry Tower warned citizens of any approaching danger 
using the only available mass medium available at the time, its bells. Those bells were also very important in a time when time literally did not exist, something that is difficult for us to realize. Special sounds with different meanings were created by ringing, clapping or chiming the bell. The work bell announced the start of the working day and the porridge bell was the signal for workers to go to lunch. The gate bell signaled the fall of night and the closing of the city gates and a special fire bell sounded at night in case of fire. And in the case of celebrations, all the bells in the city were rung festively. You can imagine now that the city Carolina had an important role and therefore a lot of status in the city. In 1333, the Belfry's wooden bell tower was replaced and raised with a second square bell structure to give these bells a more beautiful appearance. Under the bell tower, all important trade took place in the four halls, each of which were suitable for different trades and therefore called the Grocery Hall, Glove Makers Hall, Lineware Hall and Old City Hall. The many unsuspecting visitors to exhibitions in the nowadays beautifully restored rooms may not always realize it, but the wooden roof is still original and these beams have seen centuries of trade under them. Dendrochronological research have dated these roof caps of the halls to the end of the 13th century and they are as old as the tower body of the belfry. And did you know that even until 1970, the halls were used by butchers from outside the city to sell their meat? In the courtyard, all respectable citizens and merchants regularly gathered since the 14th century when the bailiff announced new regulations, or Hallegboden, from the balcony above the entrance Above these busy traders, a revolution, and maybe the most special part of the belfry, developed from the end of the 13th century, the invention of time. Initially, it was the tower keeper's job to strike the bell every hour, but in 1450, a modern invention was installed on the place where we now find a coat of arms, a mechanical clock. This first clock only indicated the hour and therefore had only one hand, but the clock in the belfry would later slowly develop into something unique in the world. The city flourished and the belfry grew with it when it was raised between 1483 and 1487 with an eight-sided Gothic section. This upper part of Brabant sandstone was clearly inspired by ecclesiastical architecture and may even have been directly inspired by the Dom Tower of Utrecht in the Netherlands. Once again, the raised tower was given an elegant wooden spire, but as if by chance, this too burned down soon after its construction in 1493. but the wealthy citizens and merchants of Bruges did not accept setbacks and as early as 1501 it was restored with a modified wooden spire making the tower about 15 meters higher than it is today. In 1605 the clock was hung higher on the octagonal lantern and in 1619 the same clock was hung on all four sides of the tower which was gilded in 1934 by Nicholas Lalu. At the, the former location of the clock, the coat of arms of the reigning prince in the city was installed in the 17th century. Today, 
This coat of arms has been replaced by that of the Belgian royal family, with the national motto, Unity is Strength, in Dutch, held by the lions from the coat of arms of the Counts of Flanders. This tower, which once, before time existed, decided how the city's citizens spent their days, suffered a last major setback in 1741, when lightning struck and again destroyed the wooden spire. This was particularly annoying, because since 1523 something very special had gradually been created in this tower, meaning that the bell tower no longer always had to be operated by the carol honor. Yes, you saw that right. On the top floor of this tower, you can now find the largest music box in the world. The copper barrel you see here was installed here in 1746 as a replacement for the crashed previous one. It is no less than 2.5 meters long and has 250 rows of 122 holes, which means a total of 30,500 holes. Because the pins are changed every two years nowadays, the tower continues to play surprising new melodies. More and more small bells were added, and as in many cities, this of course also allowed the carillon player to play increasingly beautiful melodies. The mechanism nowadays plays a different recognizable tune every 15 minutes with 47 bells. But there's one thing we haven't covered yet. The statue of Mother Mary with Child, that proudly stands above the entrance. The statue of Our Lady was first placed here around the year 1528, but was destroyed in 1794 in skirmishes during the French Revolution. The current statue was placed in 1819 in a neo-Gothic decor and was restored in 1911. In 1826, the Belfry also received its current Gothic crown finish without a spire, and since then the tower has been 83 meters high and has not changed much. The tower has created time, stood the test of time, and saw Bruges emerge as a wealthy northern European city Knights once walked through these stone gates. They saw the rise and fall of the cloth and lace industry. And they were once in Spanish, French and Dutch hands. Three fires did not prevent the tower from growing, and more importantly, from letting the people of Bruges know every day, every quarter of an hour, since the Middle Ages, how far they are in the day. And with that, we are back from the Middle Ages to our own modern times. Thanks for watching, and see you again in one of our next videos.